What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today, I have a treat for you. No, it's not laughing gas, so don't ask. But what I got here is a CO2 cylinder. Now, I do a lot of off-roading, and I don't like carrying an air compressor to fix flat tires. So I carry this CO2 tank with a regulator that I hook up uh, air chuck to fill tires. And you can even run air tools on this, but that's not what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be using this 100% CO2 in place of C25 gas, which is 25% CO2, uh, for MIG welding and see what effect that it has on our welds. So with that said, let's get into it. So a couple things before we get to doing some actual welds and comparing them. When you run C25 gas, your regulator is going to look something like this guy right here. So basically your bottle, whatever your tank is, uses this, and then your regulator has a mail fitting that screws into there. Well, if you buy a smaller CO2 tank, you're going to find out in a hurry that it's not going to work for your needs. The fitting is more or less like this, where it's flat, uses a ceiling washer, and this is threads on the bottle. So you may need to get one of these to use a 100% CO2 bottle for your welding needs. Uh, I bought this on Amazon. Your local welding store probably has one of these. So I'll put up right now what it's called so you can find it. Now with that said, the question comes up, why would you want to use 100% CO2 shielding gas? And the answer is simple. Well, at least on face value. 100% CO2 which can be done with the short circuit MIG process, can be used for it, uh, should in theory have higher heat input and possibly better penetration. Now, if you've watched any of my videos uh, dealing with short circuit MIG, you would know by now that it has a pretty significant lack of penetration issue when you start talking 3 8 and above steel, and it really doesn't matter what your settings are, you simply can't burn in that root very well on a fillet weld would be a great example. And the thought, at least a lot of viewers have suggested over the past, I don't know, eight months that I said I would get to this, was that 100% CO2 might see an increase in fusion. And I agree, it very well might. And we won't know that unless we actually test it. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, as far as why it has higher heat input, uh, it's kind of a simple thing. And this is very important, so listen up. 100% CO2 requires higher voltage from your MIG welder in order to run properly. So whatever your C25 settings are, you're probably going to need a volt and a half to two volts higher than that to get 100% CO2 to run properly. That extra voltage combined with the amperage that the machine is putting out in order to keep that wire shorting out and feeding in, long story short, gives you higher wattage, and higher wattage means more heat. So effectively, you're able to run higher voltage without an out-of-control, really wide arc cone that would make your weld very flat and wet it out uh, at typically no increase in penetration. And if you watched a couple of videos I did on spray arc, you would know how much a slight change in gas mixture combined with a lot higher voltage, uh, how much that can do for root fusion and penetration. It's night and day difference. So will we see that with this? Probably not, but I would anticipate a little bit better fusion. And we're going to try quarter inch plate to do a fair comparison on this. Also, there are drawbacks to 100% CO2. Besides the fact you may have to get a different regulator set up or at least an adapter depending on the size of your bottle and what regulator you have, 100% CO2 will have more spatter than C25. It also, from what I've heard, don't quote me on it, is harder to run with sheet metal because it tends to run too hot. Well, if you have to run a volt and a half more, that's a pretty good indication that, yeah, you're probably going to be a little bit too hot on sheet metal. But again, I don't know on that. We're not going to be testing sheet metal. Now, again, on the plus side, 100% uh, CO2 from what I've heard is cheaper. Now, I don't look at what I pay for shielding gases. I'll have to do a video on that in the future. 
but my guess is yes, it is indeed cheaper than uh, an argon blend. So that is also a benefit. But for the sake of what we're doing today, we're going to do a quarter inch test plate where I'm going to do a bunch of welds with C25, a bunch of welds with C100. We're going to cut and etch that, and then I'm going to do a couple fillet welds with 100% CO2 and just see what the hell happens in the cut and etch, uh, and we'll go from there. So let's get the welding. So I did a bunch of test welds and let me describe a little bit of what I saw. So first off, 100% CO2, I see no more spatter whatsoever over C25. It's not that that is a myth, but what can happen is a lot of people with the home hobby MIG welders that can't produce 24, 25 volts, which is what uh, C100 runs at, what will happen is if you don't have enough voltage to run with it, you're going to end up having a big issue with spatter. Not to mention, if you pump the voltage up too high, you can enter into what's called globular transfer and where big balls of metal basically fall off the wire and you're gonna get a metric ton of spatter with that. So it's just a settings issue, I think, but both of these fillet welds are run at the same wire feed, 430 inch per minute. This was done just at a higher voltage with 100% CO2. This was done at, I don't know, 21 and a half or so with C25 and equal spatter. I mean, there's even less spatter on this. Now, there are differences to the weld. When you look at these two, and let me zoom in, the C100 versus C25 here, the pure CO2 produced a rougher bead appearance. And that kind of coincides with what I saw in the weld pool, where the weld pool just seemed to have like peaks and valleys to it. It wasn't just like a smooth molten pool. And this bead with the C25 is super smooth and more or less like a 7018 pass. So the CO2 definitely has an effect on the weld pool. Luckily, it doesn't really increase spatter much because you can see they're basically identical. Heat input wise, the voltage was obviously higher with the 100% CO2, but I can tell you from past experience, just cranking up the voltage with C25 doesn't give you more penetration after a certain point. So when you're running 21 and a half, 22 volts, you know, at 430, 420 inch a minute of wire speed, you know, going up another volt or two isn't going to make a huge difference, which is why I'm pretty curious as to what's going on in the internals of this, if we're going to see more penetration because they were both run at the same wire speed. Let's look at uh, some of these passes up close. So when you look at these, you can clearly tell which ones are the C25 up to here, and then these are the 100% CO2. You can tell simply by how the weld terminates. It has like kind of a rough appearance to it versus this is very, very smooth. So a little bit difference in weld bead appearance, no spatter difference whatsoever. So that's really good. When we look at this here, which the right one was done with C25, the left one was done with C100, uh, the differences between those less significant, I would say, but it still is a bit rougher on the C100. Well, let's cut all this up and see what the hell we got. Well, that was kind of a pain in the ass to cut all these, but I did it just for you guys. So why don't we start out by looking at the cut and etch on this strip. So we do have some differences here. When you look at the C25, very typical MIG weld beads where you have decent penetration in the center and then out to the sides, there's virtually nothing. The lower you go in settings, the more or less it just sits on there like a bead of caulk with only penetration in the center. Now the C100 is quite interesting because it's more or less like a 7018 stick weld where you have a wider penetration. So the differences there were subtle. There were some 
And it's kind of leaning towards uh, the 100% CO2 having more penetration or at least a wider penetration, which that is a good thing. Why don't we look at this, which I ran settings somewhere around 420 inch per minute and 21 and a half or 22 with a C25 and I ran 25 volts with the C100. And this is a little bit different. I won't ruin it. Let's look at it. So there's a bigger difference on this. I ran higher settings for this plate than what you would typically run. And this is 3 16 thick, so a little bit thinner than the quarter we just saw. And you can see that that C100 weld almost burned all the way through the plate. Had I ran maybe a pinch more voltage and a little bit more wire, I think I could have achieved 100% fusion through that, which is pretty impressive. The C25 gas, that's about all you can expect out of short circuit MIG, which isn't really that bad. Uh, someday I'm going to have to do a comparison between a stick and MIG in a video, and you're going to see that MIG really isn't that bad of a process, and if anything, I don't give it as much credit as it probably should have. All right, let's move on. Now, based on what you saw here, I think we can all make a pretty good guesstimate as to what we're going to find in these two, so why don't we just look at them? This is as typical of a short circuit MIG weld on 3 8 plate as you're going to get. As you can see, there's some sort of penetration there, but it really didn't fuse the root where the theoretical 90 degree intersection is. And had I used a little bit different of a gun angle, maybe it would have pushed that penetration a little bit more into the upright plate. But I've done so many cut and etches like this that the end result is always basically a fail to fuse the root. It's just the nature of it. And it's primarily why I always tell you guys you probably shouldn't use short circuit MIG to be welding 3 8 plate. So the short circuit MIG, pretty typical, nothing really to speak of, and very common lack of fusion overall. It's not really great. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but let's look at the 100% CO2. So now this is a completely different result. You can see it punched way in there, much like spray arc. But unlike spray, it doesn't have basically a narrow penetration at the root and in the side barely fused in. This has a real wide stick like, kind of like 6010 mixed with 7018 rods penetration profile. So that's exceptionally good. Now, when you look at the bead, I think I hit a 45 degree angle uh, for my MIG gun, but the bead kind of sunk. So I definitely would want to aim more for the upright plate to try and keep the bead more or less even. It's a little bit slumped down, but you know, who knows, maybe that's just the side effect of the CO2 and the increase in heat input where that's going to be a battle to keep it flatter. Well, that uh, was more of a significant difference than I would have ever expected in this test. And it's funny because just looking at these beads to an untrained eye, Honestly, they're not really that much different visually looking at them from the surface. I mean, sure, you can kind of tell that the 100% CO2 is a bit rougher of a bead, but if you just gave me these and told me which one of these is going to have the most penetration, it, you're splitting hairs just visually, but yet the internals are night and day difference, especially on the uh, 3 8 plate. So where does that leave us? Well, I can say even though this is a small scale test that everything's kind of pointing to pretty strong evidence that 100% CO2 will give you quite a big difference in penetration over C25. Now, it's not a free lunch, unfortunately, gentlemen. The biggest limitation is your wire welder has to be able to run 25 volts in order to hit this kind of numbers with CO2. A lot of your home hobby machines can't hit over, say, 22 maybe 23, and you're probably going to have a lot more spatter and not really a whole lot better penetration than C25, to be honest with you. Now, in case you're wondering, had I just added a couple more volts to the C25, 
all that really would have happened is the weld would have flattened out a little bit and there really wouldn't have been that much more penetration. I've done tests like that in the past, maybe not on camera, but I can tell you that the voltage is less of a penetration driver as the shielding gas and extra voltage. Prime example would be spray arc. A simple change in shielding gas plus voltage equals massive fusion and penetration. It's just like 100% CO2. So hopefully, if you want to experiment with this, your MIG welder can run 25 volts. If not, you're kind of out of luck on this. And I got to say, that's a reoccurring theme in all of these wire videos I've done when it comes to welding quarter inch and thicker steel. Everything always points to the same conclusion. And that is that you need a stout wire welder to be able to be welding this stuff. So your 200 amp class is the bare minimum provided it can hit 25 volts. And realistically, you should be up in the 220 to 250 amp class machine to be welding stuff like this with wire processes. And it's just, I don't know, I can't beat around a bush, guys. That is what you need to safely weld steel this thick. To get the performance now based on what i saw would i make a switch to 100 percent co2 um honestly when it comes to welding thick plate i rather use c10 and, and do spray arc okay so i don't see myself switching to 100 percent co2 for the sake that my machine can spray and spray for me is faster bigger welds and can weld even thicker material so not much of an application for me, but for you there may be, especially cost-wise, uh, I guess it is cheaper. I also like how smooth the beads look with C25, and I primarily wire weld thinner stuff, so eighth and under that I need a fairly high volume, uh, which I really don't do that much anymore anyways. So I again, I don't think I'm going to be switching, but man, I got to tell you, I really like the way that the Fusion looks in there. It just, it solves the issue that C25 has always had for me, which is it's inconsistent as hell. And when you go up above even quarter inch plate, it just isn't reliable on getting root fusion. Who cares about penetration? Just fuse the root and it's just inconsistent. Whereas stuff like your stick welder or your TIG is just far more reliable on thicker plate in my experience. Anyways, with that said, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed what you saw and, you, and maybe you're going to make a switch. Let me know in the comments if you are and what your thoughts are. Um, I definitely didn't plan on this being that much of a difference, but that's the great part of testing like this is you never know what you might find. All right, until next time, guys.